Oh hey, it's Emily and today I'm going to be doing a recent reads video. And the last one I did covered June to early July, so it's been a minute. And the only two books that I didn't talk about that I read in June, I was reading for a vlog. All of the vlogs for the books that I'm going to be referencing in this video are up. I will link them down below as well as my last recent reads video. And I will refer to those vlogs a lot because quite a few of these I read for those vlogs. So I'm going to try to go through those really, really quickly. So let's just jump right in. The only two books that I didn't cover in June I read for a continuing a series vlog. And one of those was Illusionary by Zareda Cordova. And this is the second book in the Hollow Crowns duology. This is the cover uh, for reference. And this is a fun YA duology. I had a really entertaining, fun time reading this one. It's not a particularly unique premise. We've seen it quite a few times before, but I really liked the vibe of the world, and I just had a fun time following these characters and the story. Um, follows a woman who was kidnapped as a kid. The you know the people in the palace are targeting people with magic, and she has magical abilities that involve memories and so she and some other kids are kidnapped when they were a child and the crown used them to help target other people with magic and so she was ultimately rescued from the palace and she's with the rebellion right now the rebel group and there's this new weapon that they're hearing word of so she goes back under cover in the palace to learn more about this weapon entertaining time like not anything that is going to be the greatest thing I've ever read, but I had such a fun time with this one. And the only other thing that I read in June that I didn't talk about was Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo, the second book in the Grisha trilogy. I'm hoping to read the third one soon. This one definitely felt like a middle book to me, but I still had a fun time and I'm enjoying where the series is going. So again, very much looking forward to reading the third book in the series and then moving on to the Six of Crows duology. And this one follows Alina Starkov, who believes that, or discovers that she has magical abilities and she is trying to help hone those abilities to control what's called the fold which is this void area that has developed in this in this nation and there are these magical creatures that live in this void in this fold and it's they're kind of wreaking havoc so she is trying to figure out what she can do to use her magical abilities to help anyway again definitely felt like a, a second Book that was a setup to what's going to be coming. Um, there were some slower moments in the second one, more slow moments in, than in the first one, uh, but she still meets some new characters, uh, still has uh, an entertaining time, but it's definitely a quest to find a few things uh, that could get a bit slow at times, but still entertaining time. Uh, so July uh, gonna gonna jump to July. So the first thing that I read in July, I read for a fantasy vlog. Again, link below. That is the Prison Healer by Lynette Noni, and uh, again, this one, entertaining YA fantasy. This one has a bit more of a unique premise. This one is actually set in a prison. Our main character has been there for 10 years um, since she was seven years old, and she her father was also arrested uh, for acts of treason and uh, you know they he actually ended up dying in the prison she is the prison's healer she works in the infirmary there's an outbreak going on uh, there's someone delivered to the infirmary who is the queen of the rebels and she ultimately ends up and the, the queen of the rebels has been sentenced to trial by ordeal and has to survive these ordeals but she's in no position to compete or try to survive these ordeals so our main character decides to take her place for reasons and do these ordeals do this trial for her uh, to clear her name and to acquit her basically <laughs> and so it's her going through these ordeals while there's this outbreak in the prison i really liked the end twist i think we're going to be able to see some other cool things going on in this world in the next book and i'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens from where we leave off in this book had a good time next one i read uh I didn't actually read for a, a vlog, I thought I would read it for a fantasy reads vlog along with this one, but didn't end up 
actually being a fantasy. I thought it would be or have more fantastical elements than it did. That is Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. I love the Graceland series so I was really hoping I would love this. In fact it was one of my five star predictions. It was not a five star for me. This was just very very different than what I thought it would be. I just had very off expectations which I think affected my enjoyment of the story. You're following a woman who uh, basically her mom her mom's dying wish was that she if there was an opportunity presented to go to this particular manner that she go and an opportunity comes up so she accepts and goes to this manner and um, things just get a little bit weird <laughs> from there um, there's a lot to do this family is involved in a lot of different things including the art world and she begins to travel to some other some other dimensions potentially anyway it just didn't end up being what i wanted at the time it wasn't what i expected and uh, i just didn't ultimately end up enjoying it or really wanting to i listened to the audiobook really wanting to listen to it which is really unfortunate but you win some you lose some right uh, the next set of books I read for a short reads vlog, again linked below, I traveled to go pick up a car and needed to drive it back um, a couple of days so I listened to a bunch of short reads and some other things as well. So all of these are in that vlog. Um, the Last Flight by Julie Clark was the first thing that I finished. I had a really fun time with this one. This involves two women who decide to switch flights at the airport at the last minute and go on each other's flight to kind of start over. And you follow one woman after the this trade-off um, and she's kind of dealing with the implications of kind of taking over this other woman's identity for a little bit and she's trying to figure out what this other woman was running from because that's starting to catch up to her. And then you follow the past of this other woman and you kind of find out throughout the story why she was running as our other main character is in the present day and it's catching up to her and she's trying to figure out what this other woman was involved in. But they both have reasons they were running. It was super interesting. I had an entertaining time with that one. The next one that I read was Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Absolutely adore this one. Contemporary romance follows a woman with chronic pain and she one of the things she wants to do after coming close to being in an accident and getting injured is to have a list of things to get a life. She realizes that her life is not what she wants it to be and so she wants to do some things to change that. She has a list including to move out. So at the beginning of the story she moves out and the superintendent at her new place is someone that she doesn't get along with at first uh, but he is someone that can help her accomplish some of these things on her list so she elicits his help and a romance ensues from there. I thought this was amazing. I thought it was just adorable and fun. That was some really some other serious things as well but I think did it in a fantastic way uh, and I just had such a fun time listening to this one. This was a great time. The next one was The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is a novella. All I'll say is that it involves someone taking a, a test, a citizenship test to become a citizen of the UK and the test is not what it appears to be and things get get interesting from there. I think Sylvain Nouvelle did a really great job with this one. There is so much that is packed into this novella. Not only was it just entertaining and interesting, I think he also has some really interesting things to say through this novella and through the scenario, the scenarios that are played out and the characters that are involved in those different scenarios and what's going on. I think he has a lot to say and a lot that's packed into this and I really very quickly cared about what was going to happen to our main character. I think this was fantastic. I loved it. Next was Artificial Condition. I started the Murderbot Diary series and this is a series of novellas that follow our sexless, genderless robot uh, calls themselves a murder bot and is basically, you know, can be hired as security, hired contractor for security. And so you follow their different adventures uh, as they 
go along on these different contracts as they're hired as security for these different groups of people and interesting things happen and so that you know they kind of find themselves in the middle of these wacky scenarios but all they really want to do is be antisocial and watch soap operas and it's just it's just an entertaining time it's delightful next one that i read for that vlog was leave the world behind uh by ramon alam i did not end up loving this one i this follows a family who is renting an Airbnb outside of New York City and the owners of the Airbnb come to the property, you know, the first or second night that that family is there and says, hey, there's been a blackout in New York City. We need to stay here. Can we stay here with you? Uh, and they're, you know, this family is trying to figure out who this other family is and, you know, more about their story and what's going on in New York City. And ultimately, I just was waiting the entire book for the story to start. Like, I thought I would be... And there was kind of a sense of unease and tension the entire time, but I was really... I was wanting it to... Something else to happen after that point. Like, I wanted... I wanted to get scared. Like, I wanted things to keep going. And it was just a very slow... Slow story. That... I didn't like the ending, uh, and, and again, I just felt the entire time like something was going to happen and I was waiting for the story to start, but that never ultimately happened. It just wasn't for me. Um, the next one, I continue with the Murderbot Diary series, so I read Rogue Protocol. I don't really have much else to add on that. It's, you know, I think I've read three of them at this point, and I think it was... They've been relatively consistent in terms of just their fun, entertaining time. Uh, Murderbot's narration and point of view, I think, is really funny. Finds finds themselves in just some interesting situations that I found entertaining to follow along with. Um, so really not much more to add there. The next book that I read was One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is their second book after Red, Right, and Royal blue and i really loved red white and royal blue i also enjoyed this one i think i like the other one a little bit better but i still had a great time with this one you follow august and she's a young 20 something who is trying to figure out her life moves to new york city to continue school and just kind of get a fresh start and meets jane on the subway and jane kind of becomes her subway crush and she realizes that jane is stuck on the train in New York City and has been kind of stuck on the train displaced from time since the 19th and hasn't really you know aged or anything since the 1970s and so it's them you know it's August figuring out some things about her life and just her roommates I really love her relationship with her roommates her roommates were so much fun and she's just trying to figure some things out about her life getting used to a new place um, meeting Jane, figuring out and getting to know Jane a bit, and then trying to figure out what's going on with this stuck on the subway situation. It doesn't, in terms of that sci-fi element, doesn't really take itself too seriously. The book doesn't. Uh, it's just kind of a fun element that you just kind of gotta roll with. And if you can do that, like, I had such a fun time with August just exploring her friendship with her roommates, um, just trying to get through life trying to help Jane and fall for Jane. There were a few steamy scenes in here that were a lot of fun and just I had a good time with this one. I really did. The last thing that I read in the month of August I believe was also for that short reads vlog and that is Look at the Birdie by this is a series of or a collection of short stories by Kurt Vonnegut. I don't contemporary short stories too. I don't think contemporary short stories are for me maybe none of them really and I actually I've read a couple of books by Kurt Vonnegut too and really enjoyed them and so I think it's just the format isn't necessarily something that works well for me maybe I, you know nothing really stuck there wasn't enough time spent for me to really get grounded in any of these stories uh, feel anything for any of the characters I'm definitely someone who loves long books, long series, in-depth work, character work, 
Uh, and so, like, none of these short stories have really stuck with me. I can't think of the synopsis of any of these short stories. I ultimately ended up donating it, um, because I just, I know I'm not going to reread any of these. So, maybe just not for me, but we'll see. So, I'm going to move on to August. I read a couple of things in August. It was a very slow reading month, but the two things I did read were chunky, were chunkier books. Um, so I read Cursed by Thomas Wheeler. My brother let me borrow this, so I sent it back to him. Um, ultimately, it was kind of a middle-of-the-road thing. This is a King Arthur retelling, and there definitely are some very interesting elements here, and I, I would be intrigued to watch the Netflix show because I think it was a very visual writing style. I could picture everything, and I feel like this could be a really cool show. So I'm interested to try out the show. But I don't think, for me, all elements of the book were successful. Um, like, I, and it's, it's hard to describe why. I, I didn't think the character work was quite there. And it just kind of was a middle of the road. I didn't really have too many feelings about it. Book. But I'll let you know if I try the show. Next thing I read I loved, and that is Sword of Kaigen by Emma Wong, and this one follows a mother and her son in a community, and there are there are a lot of things going on uh, in this one, but you really, you get to know this family, you get to know this community, and they, some people begin to realize, um, including our mother Misaki, begins to realize that the government isn't being upfront and transparent about some things and so she's trying to figure out what's going on and who she can trust. She uh, has married into a very traditional family uh, from a place where women can actually have a lot of different positions and do a lot of things. She's kind of married into a traditional community and a traditional family where really her role is to have sons and be a mother. And um, she loves being a mother but she wants to do other Things. She knows she has other skills, including the ability to fight, um, but she can't can't really pursue those, and so it's her trying to uh, figure out what she wants to stand for, and what she wants to fight for, and who she wants to fight for, and her... A anyway, the character arc that she goes on is amazing. Uh, I talk about it more in that vlog, as I mentioned, so I'll just leave it at that. But I loved the care. It's a mixture of really good slow character work, but there were also some, you know, some faster, interesting moments and some politics going on uh, between different communities that are nearby and the government that is is coming in. So I really loved this one. I loved it a lot. Uh, so those are the two things I read in August, as well as a good chunk of, and this is the other chunky thing that I mentioned, but I technically finished it in, uh, in September, and that is The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. I officially continued the Live Ship Trader series finally. Uh, this is the second book in the second series of Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderly World, and I have mentioned this series a lot, <laughs> but I absolutely love it. Again, more thoughts in a the continuing a series vlog, which is what I read this for, and uh, you follow a bunch of different. It's a huge cast of characters. You follow uh, you follow the Vestrip family mostly, and they are a family who have a life ship that has just awakened. And in this world, they are these special ships built out of this special wood. And if three generations of a family die on its decks, then it awakens and becomes that family's live ship, and it has some sentience. Uh, and so you follow you follow this family, you follow Althea, the younger daughter, who feels like she was snubbed when her older sister and her older sister's husband are the ones who get uh, ownership of this live ship and get to, you know, run this live ship after their father dies instead of her, and she right, feels like she rightly uh, deserves that spot. So she is trying to get control of what she feels is her life ship. There are pirates, uh, you, you know, you follow some pirates as well, so you're following the politics of the live ship trader families, you're following this family in particular, you're following some pirates who want to capture a live ship for reasons, 
there there's politics there's character work that is just amazing i love this series so much it robin hop does write very slow stories uh, but they're just so interesting and i absolutely loved the matchup and i really would love to read the third book uh, very soon so love this one so that covers most of what I read for the vlogs that I mentioned. The next thing that I did was basically marathon the Charlotte Holmes series. I only have the first three physically, but I listened to these on audio, including the fourth one. And I had such a fun time with these. And I'm not going to say too much about them. Essentially, this follows the descendants of of Holmes and Watson. You follow Charlotte Holmes and Jamie Watson and they are at school and they meet each other and um, they need to solve some mysteries and it's really fun because you know there's the Watson family um, and so Jamie is that descendant and you know there's his family that's got a lot of stuff going on. There's the Holmes family including Charlotte that has its own stuff going on and there's the Moriarty family that comes into play too. And so these families still have a very interesting history and rivalry and there are different, different things between different characters in each of these families uh, that kind of come into play in, in these books. And it was just so much fun. So you actually study, start with a study in Charlotte and then the last of August, the case for Jamie and then a question of Holmes. And if you, so it's just fun. Like it is fun. I feel like the fall time is a perfect time to read these because you know school comes into play. Just the fall vibes I think were a lot of fun. Not quite as much as a series that I would compare this to which is the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. I feel like if you liked the Truly Devious series, the Truly Devious series, you would really enjoy these as well and are intrigued by Sherlock and uh, Sherlock and Watson retellings, I feel like you would really enjoy this. The fall vibes were slightly less than they were in Truly Devious, but I had a lot of fun with those. So two more. The next one that I read was Sisters in Arms by Kaya Alderson, and this was a super interesting historical fiction that follows the only all-black women battalion to actually be deployed overseas in World War II, and you follow a couple of women who join the Women's Army Corps, and it's really a character study. It's, um, I mean, it, there's the backdrop of World War II and the Women's Army Corps, uh, but really it's a story about these two women finding their place in the world and finding, finding direction in their lives after a lot of different things have happened in their life. So you follow their story, their family's stories. Um, they don't really get along at first, but they, they really come to understand each other more over the course of the story as they work together and so you kind of follow their trials and tribulations through joining the women's army corps being military officers and you know trying to gain respect as a black female military officer and just what it means for their lives um, and it was it was interesting i really had a good time listening to this one i listened to this one on audio as well and you know, it was an interesting story. It wasn't quite what I expected, but not in a bad way. I really enjoyed following these characters. I really enjoyed, um, you know, there's of course a lot of commentary at the time about how black women were treated and in particular in the military, but also just in society at large. Um, so the commentary I think was very interesting and poignant. I think it was just it was interesting to follow these characters and get to know them and see see them develop over the course of the book as as different things happen to this military unit. I really enjoyed this one a lot. And the last book that I'm going to talk about is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I absolutely love this one. Uh, this is a YA fantasy that follows our main character Bree and this cover just stunning. I love this cover a lot. And Brie recently lost her mother, so it is a, a book about grief, I think, first and foremost, and her trying to learn how to process that grief. And it's about, you know, her going to, it's kind of an early college program uh, in North Carolina, 
at the University of North Carolina and so you follow her going to this early college program and her coming into into contact with a you know she's starting to see some weird things and she's trying to figure out what's going on and how that might relate to the death of her mother and you also you know her follow her relationship with her father and a friend of hers that also is in this early college program that came with her and is starting the program at the same time you follow her friendship and as they're trying to navigate this new this new stage in their life and this new location um, you know along with Brie trying to figure out what's going on with the magical things that she's seen and she kind of gets involved in a so it's an again an Arthurian retelling uh, and so she kind of gets involved in a secret society that deals with the descendants of Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and them controlling uh, or trying to fight these different magical things going on and protect people and her trying to figure out what that has to do with her mother's death potentially. I love this. I love this. I'm so excited to read the next one. Um, I thought the character work was fantastic. I really loved Brie and I really loved following her, again, processing her grief and trying to figure out so many things as so many things in her life are changing and she's trying to just figure out what it all means. Um, she's a very easy character to root for and I, I love the adults in her life and how they are trying to help her navigate that situation. Um, and, and just her discovering the secret society, I just thought it was super interesting and very entertaining to follow. Uh, I, I loved it. I loved it. And I'm excited for the next one. <laughs> so that's it. A hopefully not too long video catching up through the end of September. Again, I'll post another one uh, that covers more of my October spooky reads. I think it'd be good to just separate that out. But thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more bookish content. I will leave my Twitter and Instagram linked down below. That's where I like to hang out. And I will also leave more information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.